Hey, hello there, person! What's up? Happy New Year! Happy Holidays! Hope you're well. Um, let's check this out. Let's check this out. Let's see what's new with Wraithbinder. Man, there's a lot I could cover here. Oh, let's start with the music. Okay, so I've been remixing this song here. It's from Songbringer. Um, the mini boss wow. song. And I've remixed it to give it sort of a Wraithbinder feeling. You know what I mean? There's a lot going on here to make it nicer and cleaner and all the all the snares and hats and kicks and everything are just uh, nicer. Everything's nicer. Even the uh, the melody line, the subs and everything coming through clear. And it's all hooked up into F mod, so when um, when you're closer to enemies, you get to um, your the the drums kick in more and the intensity of the melody kicks in too. I'm gonna close this because it's using a lot of CPU. Well, a lot of CPU because I have a lot of things open here. Let's actually um, I'll show you one more thing here so I can get this closed as well. We've got complete parity. Uh, between the Windows DirectX, sorry, Direct3D and Double Eleven Engine version compared to the OpenGL version. So I've got these exactly the same. The shaders are, are totally working fine now. Check out how beautiful this looks. Wow, I'm impressed. I'm so impressed. Hope you are too. Um, the one issue I had that was not solved last week that I was talking about was there was some kind of issue where there was, um, uh, some kind of transparency issue. I couldn't get the, the background voxels to draw with any kind of transparency at all. They were always drawing as fully opaque and it turned out to just be this one little thing where it wasn't using an RGB multiply flag. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's good too. Um, let's see, I, I can't really close that without it doing a whole suspend thing and really like killing the CPU for a second. So let's just move on to some other stuff. Um, okay, it's been working a lot this week on the procedurally generated PvP world, so I'll start playing that and we'll uh, start talking about that. Um, because one of the funnest things that got added this week was these camera stops. Check this out. Oh, not this world. We gotta go to a different world. There we go, some world. Give some bots to have fun. And let's do this. So last week I was talking about the procedurally generated uh, worlds where basically it's using a maze generator to create a world and there's all these different sort of like areas in there that um, that can get created at each different point of the maze. And uh, But now we have camera stops which give everything this sort of dungeony feeling. So check it out, the camera slides to the next screen. And this gives it sort of like a, a Songbringer vibe, also sort of like a Zelda, -y, Zelda 1 vibe. But most importantly, um, oh, what just happened? Whoa. Uh, most importantly, it's finally giving you a reason to use the camera rotation. So before there was, wow, we're really getting some big old slowdowns here. Uh, there was no reason to actually use the camera rotation before. Um, but now, uh, if there's an enemy that's off the screen to the top, you can see a lot more in the view when it's going off the, the top of the screen than you can to the left, or the right, or even below. So you can use the, ca the uh, camera rotation to your advantage to see what's going on in different areas, and, um, and, uh, and maybe gank an enemy, something like that, from a distance, right? If, you're, if, you're, if you can see them off the top of the camera and they can't see you, you can get them. And same thing too, you gotta watch your back with this too, so you really have to be um, sort of like playing, when you're playing Dota, you can't you can't just like keep your camera focused in front of you, you've gotta check behind you all the time to see if you're gonna get ganked, right? Um, so that's kind of the point of this, right? To give you a, some sort of competitive advantage to actually using the camera, so to basically reward players that are sort of advanced players, right? But also it's just fun. I really love how these camera stops uh, are giving you um, this sort of really just this the dungeon feeling, the um, the mystery of it, the mystery of like what's on the next screen, what's what's over here. I love it. So really, really um, enjoying these um, these camera stops. Um, there's so many things I want to cover, so I'm just gonna uh, refresh my memory. 
Um, we'll talk about camera stops. Um, the camera is now rotating 90 degree increments, increments instead of 45 because of the camera stops. Uh, oh, when you um, when the erosion starts happening, so the world starts to erode when after like a few minutes of play, and um, the world starts just crushing in on itself. So you can see that on your mini map too. It'll show a big old white ring uh, when that's happening. Um, oh yeah, creeps and and uh, and also other players, the bot players can can break jars now. So if there's a jar in their path, they can break it to to um, to get past that. Uh, what else here? Um, oh my gosh, this is really really important. There was this one issue where you would get every single player on the screen or every single player in the entire match was all on the same team, which in Wraithbinder, that means that somebody is bound to everyone else's rates. And that's, that, that's a victory condition. That means somebody should win at that point. But it wasn't happening. You would get everybody on your team and the match just wouldn't end. So it totally solved that issue. And um, that's a really great fix. Probably one of the most important things I did all week um, was that, oh, I got slain. Slain by Tom. Speaking of that, I should mention that um, I think I should probably do something about this, right? When you're fighting an enemy and they're just off screen, um, but, uh, and so, so you can sort of like see them if you're on, on one edge of the screen and you, you, the camera just keeps on switching back and forth, right? If you're kind of like doing this, there's, there's an issue with that, right? There's some sort of gameplay. There needs to be some kind of improvement there where the camera's just a little bit smarter. I love these whole camera stops, but they're, this this can't become something annoying where if you're right on the edge and it keeps on going back and forth, that's just kind of weird, right? So if you have any comments on that, if you have any ideas, please comment in the comments um, and let me know what your, your thoughts are on that. I'd really like to know how I can solve that. Um, while keeping these really fun camera stops. So, uh, let's keep on ro rolling through everything else here. Um, oh, the UI is much clearer now about how it shows who is a wraith. So, I'm a wraith right now, and you notice that my portrait up top has turned the color of my team. My player portrait has also turned semi-transparent, and the outline of my portrait has turned gray. So it's, it's just much clearer that I'm a wraith. Um, and you can tell that Tom, Mia, and Lynn are all still alive. They're living players that have not turned into wraiths. They uh, still have the opportunity to become the MVP of this match. So uh, that's nice to have that clear. Um, what else? Oh, I showed that guy last week this. Everything else is not really that important. Yeah. Oh, the last thing I want to mention here is this visual aesthetic improvement. So you, you may have noticed already uh, that the visuals are just a little bit nicer. The background colors are a little bit more saturated. And I'll go into some detail here. Let's actually open up my... Whoa, just getting annihilated by those traps right there. Um, here's my document I've been working on about that. Let's go with... Um, let's get that out of the way. Meh, meh, meh. And we'll st start with the beginning. So this is what it looked like a week ago. Um, actually, that is what it looked like a week ago, right? I, I, basically, this screenshot right here has my player standing a little bit um, up to the north of where you would start at and facing to the north too, so the camera pans upward a little bit, which will show you that you've got these colors going on in the background, right? That it's it's really saturating these background colors and you can tell everything's blurred out by the blur shader but this is what what I don't like right here this is what caused me to take a a, a, a better look at this actually let's zoom in on this you can just kinda of see really what's going on there um, see how it turned these colors sort of a, a reddish color and it's sort of a, a murky yellow or it's kinda of ugly right this is what it was just bothering the heck out of me I'm like what can I do about this and whenever I tried to fix that, I would get these clouds to stop looking as good. Let's check it out. When I um, add in like this, this is the this is the same thing, but I played with the shaders a little bit, so it's not creating as many of these murky colors. But now we've got sort of this. Um, the background is still kind of looking good, but but not quite giving me the the look that I was looking for. In fact, here's here's another version too, right? 
Here's a version where we completely do not have any of those weirdly saturated colors in the background. But now, the clouds have gone puffy again. They've gone and they're not as 8-bit looking. And in fact, I know from experience that this will mean that I won't be able to create as cool of GIFs and post them online because this is too much information to try and slosh into a GIF file where you've got hundreds of different frames that just won't work. You won't be able to get it. At least you won't be able to get it on Twitter with it, with its stupid 15 megabyte limit. Yeah. So, anyways, um, here's a sort of a blending between those two. Um, here's another version, but you can tell it's really saturated the heck out of these colors. Well, at least we don't have any of those ugly yellows, though. Um, here's sort of another version, but now we're really lacking the saturation in the clouds, right? This, the clouds just aren't looking as cool at all as this original version. Let's see, there's the original, right? We got some pretty nice looking saturated clouds, but we still got that ugly background. Here we're, we've sort of improved the background a little bit, but it's, but it's too gray. So here we go, here's something a little bit, uh, almost the same thing, but here, we have starting to have something that's that's succeeding, right? This is basically just taking the original strategy, but only applying it about 25%. So we can still see there's some nice little saturation going on with these bluer colors right here, but these, we've gotten rid of those those uglier yellows and, brown, and reds and browns going on, but we still have too puffy of clouds. They're not sharp enough. They're not, um, they're not stepped enough, is that what, I guess, thresholded it. Fresh hold it in. That's a word. Um, but here we go. Here is the final result. And this is what I did, is I basically just took the clouds and I was looking at some old GIFs that I had made, gosh, over months and months ago. This was talk we're talking about May of this year, April of this year, March or something like that. And um, I had these really crispy clouds going on because I was running a shader on the background clouds and then running a shader on the entire uh, screen so basically we were taking these clouds which originally look like that right here we have these just purely puffy clouds going on and this is what it used to look like um, but I was like wait a minute because I, I really wanted the optimization of only using one shader so that, that was the thing that I did somewhere during the years I, I optimized all the shaders but I didn't notice at the time that I had kind of killed my, my crispy cloud effect so I was like, wait a minute, why don't I just go to the the, uh, the PSD file in Photoshop here and actually make all the clouds look crispy and basically apply this, this whole stepping shader effect before I even um, put it in the game. And so that's what this is. And then I was like, okay, so it looked like about like this with just the stepping effect. Uh, but sort of blending the two effects together, we have this. This is where we have sort of this stepped crispy look but also we have the puffy look a little bit transparent in there too and it all turns out to give you this this look right we've got these we've got these crispier edges going on in the clouds we've got nice saturation going on look how saturated this background is right there right super saturated there but less saturated over here in the lighter colors which is something you would naturally see to your eye um, deeper shade deeper values have sort of higher saturation naturally and then I just confirm that this all looks the exactly the same on Windows um, there's some some issues like I'm not sure why Windows still has this sort of bridge up here but um, the Mac version doesn't I don't know I'll have to investigate that later but but fundamentally as far as the shader is going it's drawing exactly the same kind of pixels and the same, give, putting out the exact same values and everything between these two different screenshots right here. One of them Windows, one of them Mac. So, I've probably talked way too much already about all this stuff. Uh, it's been a pretty productive week. So, um, yeah, working on more music, more fun, more procedurally generated levels next week. And uh, so, we'll hit you with that video later on. Thanks for watching this person, and Happy New Year.